Hey, it's Andrew Ranzi with Content Sprout, and I got a lot of questions from a bunch of people who use my tool, and they all ask, do you really need on-page optimization for content that's been written by AI? And it's a good question, and specifically, I'm going to answer, do you need those tools for Content Sprout? So each tool that is writing AI content is going to be a little bit different. And if you're writing on your own, you don't have to use a tool like mine. You can do it just with ChatGPT. I personally think that tools will be a little bit better for most people, but some people like to do it themselves. And honestly, that's why I started Content Sprout to begin with. It was originally just meant for me. So what I'm going to dig into with my three favorite tools, and hopefully you guys all know these tools, but I'll list them. One, we have InLinks, my number one favorite. Two, we have OnPage AI, super good tool, kind of a competitor in some ways. It's a content sprout, but I'm still going to bring up my boy, Eric. He's been nothing but kind to me, and he's built a great tool. So I'm going to use that tool in order to show you what our uh, what content sprouts content does. And the last one is something called Phrase. Now, I found out about Phrase when I was just probably perusing AppSumo. If you don't use AppSumo, guys, you gotta use AppSumo. I got a lifetime deal for Phrase, so I paid, I think, 200 bucks or something, and now I just have it forever. And it's really awesome. They keep adding a lot of things. I think if you haven't used any, any of these tools, definitely use them. Uh, there are honorable mention companies that I wanna throw out there too. Uh, Surfer is a great tool as well. Everyone knows that. Pop is a great tool. There's, there's so many tools out there, guys, and you can't go wrong. Personally, I like tools that are optimizing more for entities, and that's what I'm going to go over is entities. Good. Why, do, why should I listen to you? I'm sure you're asking yourself that if you don't know me. Well, if you Google entity SEO, which is probably the best term you could possibly get for uh, defining what on-page optimization is today. It's entities. So if you look at it, what do you see? You see you see me. So let's uh, open this up. Let's do a little, uh, little look. Entity SEO. Uh, and there we go. So that's me right there. Well, what about how to optimize for entities? Oh, wouldn't you know it. That is also me. So trust me, uh, one... I'm in search engine land. Two, I'm ranking for these things. Three, I built a tool specifically for this. I think it works really well. I have success with it, and I'm going to show you what to do. So I've already gone on long enough. Let's go right on in, and I'm just going to show you uh, these tools. So first off, let's dig into Content Sprout. So we'll do this first. All right, so... I'm in the staging site for Content Sprout, and the screen just got so much brighter, so my, <laughs> my face. But uh, anyway, this is the staging site, so we're about to push this live. Right now, Content Sprout is not fully live. It is in beta, and I appreciate all the beta testers that are out there. I appreciated it so, so much. So what I'm going to show you now, though, we're going to go into topics. So I generated a couple topics before I hopped on to record this video. And what I wanted to show was just a bunch of different things. So we have roofing company, we have VPN business, we have mortgages. And this is going to show you uh, a little bit of the tool and a little bit of uh, AI content. So let's dig into the actual content, though. So one of the things I just did was I wrote this, this article from my topic map, and it's called The Connection Between PPC and SEO, Utilizing Keyword Data Across Channels. So it came up with the topic. It's great. I'll show you exactly where it came up with the topic. Uh, I believe it's just an SEO agency. And then somewhere in here, I, I might have to, <laughs> might have to ditch it on page. No, it's it's not. Poo. Well, I'm going to skip it. You don't need to see it for the purpose of this. Oh, it's it's here. It's totally here. Here to research. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to do it. So what I'll do is I'll click into this. You'll be able to see it. Yes. Here's the article, looking fine, looking so, so fine. So I think that uh, if you just scroll to the bottom, 
what you can see is this is a 4,500 and D3 word article. So super sweet. Um, what we're going to decide is, is this content good? Because out of the box, it came like this. I've done nothing to it. And for those of you that, this is another question for another time, but if you think that you can just post AI content forever and it will rank, how many lazy people are in the world? I bet you it's a lot more than people who work hard. Now, I think there's enough people who work hard to put the lazy people out of business, in my opinion, or at least work hard enough. So while AI content is great, you got to think about it this way. AI content is literally algorithmic generation, word by word, line by line, paragraph by paragraph, literally a uh, n-gram by n-gram. So... How many options are there really? If you're talking about a subject, how many unique combinations exist? I, I don't know. I'm not going to answer that question. But that should tell you enough. If you think on that, you'll know, well, maybe I should edit this content a little bit. It doesn't matter what tool creating the AI content. It really doesn't. That's not the point. The point is the principle. The principle is, how should I use AI content to reduce 80% of my workload? So... I talk about that a lot. I'm just going to say, keep in mind what I recommend is having an editor go in, organize this kind of content a little bit better, just a little bit. You know, this gets you 80% of the way, 90% of the way. But what you're going to do is you want to add things like statistics. You want to add things like case studies. You want to add examples, more comparisons. You want to add personal stories that are really, really on subject. You don't want to give opinions just want to provide facts but if you can provide unique information and say it and it doesn't even have to be unique information in the sense of uh let's say the glass is half full that's saying 50 percent of water is in the glass is there another way of saying that i could say of the water is in the glass that's another way of saying it so Try to say things in a unique way. Try to say things uh, in a way that also incorporates lingo that is important. You don't want to talk about people's heads, but you want to include the things that matter. And a lot of times, content on the internet, up until now at least, for most companies that aren't giant behemoths that are $2 billion, $1 billion, or $500 million, these are like the top three companies, whatever, that own most of the, of the SERP. I don't know if you know this, but about one-third of all of the results you probably ever see come from the same five companies. Crazy, right? Uh, yeah, it, it turns out that the world is a lot more uh, been monopolized, but we don't care because, you know, I have Uber Eats and, <laughs> and Amazon. <laughs> so I'm just going to give myself over to, uh, to technology. I'm just going to let it happen. All right, so we'll keep going. I'll get off, off my high horse over here. So I'm not going to read this. Uh, I'll tell you the, the general principle of how it starts, though. The first part of an article, no matter what article you are writing, you need to have the information that is most relevant. You don't want to go off on a story about your grandma. You don't want to talk about all these different things that don't matter. Recipes have historically been terrible with this. I'm glad that's changed, especially in the world of SGE, which is the new uh, Google search experience. But... The beginning, because it's important, and you'll know this if you read about heading vectors or you read entity-oriented search, uh, I think it's by Christian, Christian Balog. Anyway, so read that three times. Nice, easy read. 350 pages or something of just entities. <laughs> so if you read that and you read some other ones too and how they index, how they re-rank and all that kind of stuff, you'll learn exactly how to order your content. And that's exactly why I am ordering it this way. So... In this comprehensive article, it always starts with that, because I call it a comprehensive article. Readers will gain a thorough understanding of both pay-per-click. It's telling the reader exactly what they're going to learn. Uh, not only that, what you're seeing is pay-per-click, and you get the acronym, man, that's highly optimized, very natural sounding, including the key differences and similarities. Th these would be attributes, and this would be a context. So we want to know the differences of these things. Uh, we're going to learn the importance of keyword research. So that's what this was. So this is a keyword research cluster, but it's keyword research that is with a focus of PPC and SEO. So 
that's the context for this. So it's just going to repeat kind of the exact uh, flow of what this article will be. And as you can see, there's numbered lists and all sorts of stuff here. Great, great, cool, perfect. Uh, I prioritize having numbered lists over just about anything else, um, at least with my AI content. I think it's really nice to have. If I want a writer to expand, like my expert writers, it's kind of perfectly set up for that. Uh, makes it super easy. So that's why I do this. You don't have to to keep your numbered lists. I will say it's important for AI co or for any content to include multiple forms of your data. So what that means is paragraph is a form. Uh, we have numbered list. We have bulleted list. We have video. We have images. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things you could do. So just keep that. Oh, and audio, of course. So you can have content in multiple forms. The more, the better. Happier, the mirror. Oh, yeah, and ta data tables, too. That's another one. So I'm going to put this now inside of the tool. Let's just copy and paste it. And we have... So this is our already going. What I did here was I ran a search for PPC and SEO. That's the keyword. It's kind of hard because I'm using a keyword that's a little bit, you know, the connection between PPC and, and SEO, utilizing keyword data across channels. It could be honestly a bunch of keywords, but PPC and SEO seemed like the hardest one. I, it just does. So why not use the hardest one and measure ourselves against the hardest? So that's what we're going to do. Now, uh, well, I already gave it away, darn. So go over here, paste this. And uh, we're just going to give it a second, right? I have not tested this before. I will not edit this out. This is just the score is the score. I want this to be as honest as possible. While this is going, though, uh, and analyzing, let's go to phrase as well. So phrase, I'm not as familiar with phrase anymore because I haven't been using AI tools nearly as much. Uh, research. Optim. Okay, so the score we have 62% is the average score across competitors. We are obviously at 100%. We have it set up right now by cluster, I believe. So, or no, long tail. Yeah. So if I do cluster, here we go. So now you can see the clusters. Uh, it's showing red because we've said the word keyword too many times. I don't agree, but you know, you can. You can uh, edit this kind of stuff later. A lot of times you're not really going to know what to do until the SERP happens, you know, where you, you see all the uh, how your site is interacting on the SERP. Is it uh, going up, down? What position is it at? What is the top 10? What does it look like up there? And if the top 10 has changed in any way, which actually none of the tools really do a good job of telling you, hey, the context change or you, you need to understand that there's a difference now what you need to be optimizing for. It doesn't really tell you that, so got to use your noggin. So now we have all of the clusters right here. You can do long tail, and we have the actual words, tons of words. Great, 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 great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do heat map. So heat map is a really cool tool. And as you can see, you have my content right here. And what we're just going to look at is we're going to look at the green bubbles and just one cursory glance, we see all of position one, two, three. We get good old Neil Patel, good old HubSpot, all these guys. Forbes, screw you guys. Search Engine Journal. Right. So green, 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 white. Okay, they're a little bit ahead. This one's doing good. So it would appear that HubSpot is probably doing the best up until this point, and it just kind of drops off. Uh, and then they are nowhere near as dense. So as you can see from ours, though, we have a lot of dense stuff. I don't know why real estate is here. As you can see, these tools aren't perfect. And a lot of people treat it as if it is. That score, while it's great, you, you don't need to do that. Like the fact that real estate's on here, it's just saying that, I think, because HubSpot and Neil Patel. You don't need it. So zero tons and tons and tons. Mine by far, you know, Content Sprout, the most great. So absolutely awesome. Love it. We have 4.6, 30 headers. Perfect. We can move on to the next one. So out of the box, it comes edited. In links, a hey, 100%. All of these are entities, and this is why I like this more. It's not just keywords. It's important to do keywords, but because keywords make up 
entities. That's how we describe entities. They're that's just part of it. But that's not. Uh, don't don't get them mixed up. So that's what these things are. We have 106 instances of this, 111 of this. What's perfect and what I love about this is the AI, the tool, has perfectly created kind of this match, this balance of both. You'll see SEO, 106, PBC, 111. That's basically 50-50. So that's exactly what I want. Thank you. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. Great. And sometimes you'll come across things like this, like a search engine result page. A lot of times what you'll you'll find is you might have said SERP or you might have said search engine result pages, and it's not going to pull up on here. And that's, you know, one of the annoyances of this. Sometimes I haven't quite figured out how this works. I just know that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, let's let's skip ahead. I'm, I'm already rambling enough. Um, what we can see, though. It, this works perfectly. This is great, guys. Look at all this stuff. Green, 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 green. You can see some like resource projects comparison. It's not the biggest deal that we don't. So this one's perfect too. Absolutely fantastic. Good job, us. AI content. Do you need to edit it? Well, you do with other tools. You don't with content sprout. That's the whole reason I don't even think. I mean, I. I'm not going to lie, as soon as I started relying on Content Sprout more than anything else, I stopped, I basically downgraded all of my licenses. I no longer was like just agency mode of bajillion credits running all this. I don't need it if I'm writing with this. This gets me where I need. Once I get there, I can have the expert write whatever they want or my writer, my editor. I don't need them to do anything. I don't need to train them on a tool. I don't, I don't need anything other than be the best freaking writer that you can be. Be the most informative person you can be. That's it. That's all that matters. So that being said, let's go to the last one. And this one's amazing too. I absolutely love this tool. It's, it's a very cool tool. So we have a lot more words than they have over here. H2s, uh, great. H3s. I don't really use H4s. Honestly, I don't get a, I don't get it. I don't understand. I really don't understand why they even exist, especially H5s and H6s. They don't do anything for rankings. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't run a test in two and a half years, probably maybe three, probably three years now. So I haven't tested it in a while. It it didn't mean jack shit. I won't swear. We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube. I won't swear. It means jack shit is what it means. <laughs> I don't care we're on YouTube. I'm not making any money off of this. I'm just doing this for fun because I'm a nerd, all right? So uh, normal mode, this is what it means if you are looking for just kind of like the aggregate of the entire first page of the Google search engine results. And then you can switch it to max mode. And max mode is only looking at the top result. And it's saying, how do you compare against the top? So we win on both situations. Perfect. Don't have to do much more. Uh, you can see a bunch of different stuff here. Research, swipe, optimize. Has all these words. Look at all that friggin' green. So just to wrap it up, we're already at about, looking at the timer, it's about 18 minutes, 45 seconds. A uh, good bit. So... I'm going to try to end this in one minute. I'll tie it all together and just say this. Do you need to optimize AI content? Sometimes. Depends on the tool. Do you need to optimize content sprout content? No. 